Hello again. I'm making this video because a few of my students have run into problems with using the uh, virtual disk image that, that I've posted. Um, and also because it's probably just good for you to be able to, to know how to create your own uh, virtual machine uh, and you know, do the, the Linux install and whatnot. So I'm going to run through a, a video where I show you how you can set up your own uh, Linux install on on under uh, uh, VirtualBox. This will require you to download more stuff and to do the installs, which is what I was hoping to avoid having the disk images posted. However, uh, if that doesn't work for you, this will work just as well, and it is an educational thing for you to do. So the first thing you have to do, you have to download and install VirtualBox, so you can use their downloads and pick whichever version fits the operating system you have to happen to be running. And the next thing I need you to do is to download a version of Linux. And in the image that I used was Linux Mint. Uh, I happen to be running Ubuntu on the computer that I'm you know, recording these videos on. There are other versions. You can pick uh, whichever version you want. In this example, I'm going to go through and use Linux Mint. And so I'm going to show you with Linux Mint 13 under the downloads and I went ahead and I went with the the default the mate in 64-bit you can pick one of these others if you happen to and this would be the default if, if you don't have any reason for picking another um, desktop environment now I will warn you this download is probably going to take a while uh, it will depend obviously upon the speed of your internet connection but this is not going to be uh, all that fast. You'll also wind up installing uh, Java and Scala as well, uh, but we'll come back to those in a bit. So after you've installed VirtualBox and you bring it up, what you'll want to do is you'll want to create a new virtual machine. And we can call it uh, I'm going to call it Linux Mint Build. Uh, operating system Linux, sure, 2.6. Uh, this is a, a Debian. You'll notice they don't have Linux Mint, so I just went with 2.6 uh, general. Uh, they do have an Ubuntu, so if you decide to, to pull that version, you, you can. Uh, how much memory should you give it? Well, I'm going to give it I don't know, about four gigs of memory. Well, we'll see. You want to give it probably at least two for, for things to work well. If you have to go below two, it's not going to work well. On the other hand, if you start getting close to the top level of, of how much your machine has, you'll note that the color coding changes here, so you'll get something that, that doesn't run very, or that makes your entire computer slow down and you can't do anything else. So I'm going to create a new hard disk for this as opposed to using an existing one. And I'm perfectly happy using the VDI. Uh, dynamically allocated, sure. We don't need it to uh, automatically create the full size. We can go with a smaller file. And how much size should we give this? Well, right now it's set up for eight gigabytes. I'm perfectly happy leaving it with that. If you are going to be using this for an extended period of time, you might want to make this larger. So there's our summary, and I go ahead and I create it. Now, at this point though, I need to come into the settings, and yes, I'm not too interested in the USB aspects of this. But I want to go to storage, and have it so that the uh, CD drive is set not to be the actual CD drive on the machine, but instead I want to find an image. So I saved under in the directory that I use here. This is where I put the ISO file. So when you download, whether it's Linux Mint or Ubuntu or whatever, you're going to get one of these ISO files. And I want to set that to be the CD drive that it uses so that it doesn't pull down um, the uh, so it doesn't pull it off of whatever disk I have installed and it uses that instead. 
So now when I click OK, if I go ahead and I start this, you'll see that it's figured out that that is a Linux Mint install and it is going to automatically boot. I could hit a key to probably just speed it up. Um, but this is going to run through and it's going to boot up Linux Mint for us. Uh, and after it boots it up, we're going to have an option to go ahead and install it on this disk. This is a live CD and in fact you can play with this. It's possible that you might want to decide that you, you want to have Linux on your own computer. Uh, for testing that, so instead of running it under a virtual machine, actually have a Linux partition on your computer. You can play with running a live CD and that will allow you to test that out. This virtual box is showing up much larger than what my current screen size is. Uh, so we'll have to uh, to deal with that. So here we go. I have this. It tells me that I have a wired network. Let's see. Um, okay. So there's the install Linux Mint right here. So right now this is just running off of the live CD and if I actually want to make it so that it is what is uh, installed there, I can double click on that Now while it was in the live CD, I could have done a lot of the things that, that we've done, but I can't really install stuff because it won't remember that next time. I have to actually go through the installation if I want it so that it will remember whatever settings I put in and, and more importantly, all of the software that I install. Because we need to have it so that you have Java installed, we need to have it so that you have um, the Scala installed. I'm perfectly happy using English. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And yeah, so if you were installing on a on a, your own machine and you wanted to have Windows there for a dual boot, you would clearly want to go for the second one. But I'm installing this here on a virtual uh, partition. You're going to be doing the same thing. There really isn't anything there. So we're going to continue. Uh, this is the partition that we set up under VirtualBox. And so I say install now. And it runs through and does various detection. And ask me for different options. So yes, I am in the Chicago time zone. I am perfectly happy using English. US English is my keyboard. Pick a username. Well, I would pick M. Lewis. You can pick whatever you want. Now, something that you might have noticed is that it is uh, that it's actually helpful if you have this username match whatever it is that you're going to use for uh, when you actually log on to um, to the the broader you know, system that maybe you use at your school or whatnot. Uh, you can also select it so that it will log you in automatically or require it. Uh, it's up to you. So it might be a little bit of a convenience for you for the virtual machine to log in automatically not actually what I'm used to doing so I'm going to whoa whoa I don't remember clicking there okay and here we go I'm feeling like I should have closed some applications before doing this install in fact if you're watching this 
one thing I highly recommend is that you do close uh, a lot of your files. So this will run through and just show you, uh, you know, kind of a slideshow while it's doing the installation. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording, and then after I have the install completed, we'll come back and we'll look at setting up the software on this system.